I haven't been back to Guildford for ages, but I used to come a lot as a child, and we used to come to the old market, which isn't very far from here. And I remember selling, selling my guinea pigs at auction. <laughs> I get about five shillings each for them, I remember. But uh, it's a very fond memories of it. And we used to come to the Yvonne Arno Theatre as well a lot. You're obviously best known for your role as a presenter on BBC Breakfast, um, but uh, also one of your passions, obviously, beekeeping. Um, how did you get into that? When were you first sort of uh, drawn to, to that as a, as a mm. hobby? Well, that started about 17 years ago when I, it, I was first drawn to it, uh, when a swarm landed in my garden. Uh, and I was really intrigued by the way that a beekeeper came to take them away. And then I thought, I might try that one day. Years went by. And, uh, and I went and traveled abroad and worked in America for several years and came back. And eventually I saw a sign for a course about beekeeping and took it up oh, about 10 years ago now. So, uh, and uh, after many trials and tribulations, this is where I am. Most of the Bad Beekeepers Club, which is the, the name of the book, is about demystifying the process of beekeeping and because people don't understand a lot about it. And also, it's a humorous look at all the sort of dreadful mistakes I've made over the years. But some of it does touch on the, on the problems that beekeepers have had with their losses ar around the world, really, particularly in America with colony collapse disorder. And it's just an explanation of, uh, of what those issues are. How easy would it be to, to take up beekeeping? Well, it takes a bit of commitment uh, and a bit of courage. Uh, it's not so you can't just sort of plonk a beehive in the middle of your garden and hope, you know, that, that everything will be okay. You do really have to, to learn about it and have a fair, fair bit of time to, to devote to it. But once you do get into it, it is immensely satisfying and very relaxing. And you get the joy of knowing that you are sort of, in a sense, with the bees, giving something back to the environment. So it's not to be done lightly, lightly but it, it is very worthwhile. And finally, um, if perhaps someone who wants to, to do something to help bee populations, but perhaps not ready or, or able to become a, a beekeeper themselves, what, what ways could they actually help and contribute to, to bee populations? Well, it's a, a simply a question of planting flowers, really, and plenty of nectar-bearing flowers uh, in, in your garden. Uh, and, uh, and as long as you do that, and you know, don't squash a bee when you see one, I guess, is the simplest answer. But just uh, to do a little bit of research into the sort of flowers that the bees like. I plant lavender in my garden because they like it a lot, and uh, that's the best way to help them.